everybody and happy Friday! Welcome to episode 8 of May Google Be With You and today we are going to play around with Google Sites. Now I'm really excited about Google Sites because it's just the perfect way to bring information all in one place at your fingertips, whether that is for a a classroom site, like a traditional class web page. Maybe it's for a project, a sports team, parent communication, you name it. We can have so much fun with this free and easy tool that's just drag and drop website building, no coding experience required. And so we're going to jump in today with using Google Sites. Now, a couple of things. I'm gonna be showing you what's new and tips and tricks, kind of those fun geeky extras. So if you are brand new to building Google Sites and you've never done this before, down below this video, I have the Google Sites Superhero Course where I've broken down every single step with a video in order to learn how to build a site from scratch. And so stop this video, pause this video, don't get overwhelmed, go ahead and look at that first. Otherwise, we're going to be using the new Google Sites. Now, in Edmonton Catholic Schools, Google Sites has been enabled um, for all schools who have requested it. So if you're an Edmonton Catholic School uh, teacher and you're like, wait a second, I don't have new Google Sites, it's no problem. Your principal just puts in a ticket to IATS and they will enable sites for you. We also only have Google Sites for 16 schools um, for their students. It's a pilot project with students right now, just trying to show the academic rigor and safety and just plain awesomeness of students being able to build with real life tools. You know, instead of the paper brochure that pretty much doesn't exist anymore on the interior planes, we can have kids building websites about the interior planes. And so I'm gonna show you a little about that today. So we do only have those 16 schools. If you're one of our guests today, no problem. You would just have to check with your own site domains to see what do you have available to you for the new Google Sites. So today we're going to get started with things like custom banners and buttons. We're going to look at custom colors, how we can add a favicon, what kind of content can we embed extra onto our sites, and of course how can we share those sites with others easily, and finally how can we copy a site, um, an entire site, be able to transfer some ownership and share the love. So you can join me by going to sites.google.com new and we're going to get started. All right, so when we go to sites.google.com slash new, it's going to take you to the new infrastructure for Google Sites. Um, Google Sites has been around for a very long time, but it had its brand new update just a couple of years ago. So what you can see here is Trish really loves sites. These are all of my different Google Sites that I use. I now use them pretty much exclusively for my professional development and my workshops and my online courses because now people can self-pace through the content as opposed to being stuck with me clicking through death by slide share. Now, what I have for you is a lot of examples I just want to take you to just to spur your um, wonder and intrigue of what types of things can you build. So right now you can see I'm on our May Google Be With You page uh, that you can all access our materials for each week and I'm in the building structure of it as opposed to the published site. And so on this page, what I have for you is example sites for you. Now, massive shout out to Google Ninja, Devin Austin. He knew that Google Sites was today's episode. And so he sent me an email with all of his different Google Sites just to share the love with you today. So I'm going to go through some of those sites with you. But you can see on here, I have links to all of those sites just to inspire you of what could it look like, what kind of content can go with it, and how are others using sites. So thank you to everybody who's contributed this uh, in addition to Devin. We can see we have some second language uh, film project here from Andre Sanchez. I've got some 360 images and storytelling site that I've made. Joni Nahernik has made a site all dedicated to GeoTools, which we're going to be covering next week, and we'll go into her site in more depth. The Amazing Susie Sermon was part of our original pilot program uh, for getting Google Sites for Edmonton Catholic, and she's made an awesome Chemistry 30 site. We can see some student projects, tech coach, departments, and then, of course, I have a lot of my sites here from MTech. So let's take a look at what some of these can look like. When you're on Google Sites, it gives you a lot of different options for what it can look like and the different type of feel you can have. So this is a site I made teaching people to do art with coding. So you can see I have a custom color here on my banner. And my buttons don't even really look like buttons. I was able to use Google Drawings to make some paint splashes, use some word art, and put in an image. And so these buttons are just really a, a beautiful way to fit with the theme of my site and people to be able to click on them. 
You can see in Susie's sermon site that she has embedded her Google Classroom calendar so that her students know exactly what's coming up, her contact information, syllabus, weekly planner, and then you can see she's actually broken down all of the different units of study for students just to be able to have at their fingertips information, the notes, practice, study information, you name it, is all here for them so that there's no having to wait. I'll also point out, if you look at the name of her site here, Chemistry 30, you can see this little logo. That's called a favicon, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Even on the MTech site, you can see we have a lovely little favicon logo. Um, but if you're on just a, another site, you'll notice that we don't necessarily see it. It just depends if you added one, and so I'll be showing you how to do that today. This is a site that comes to us from the St. Joseph Social Studies Department, where they've come together to put their entire department site all together with useful links, videos, recommended podcasts, and of course they've broken down the learning guides for all of the different social studies grade levels and areas. So this is a massive source of information and collaboration. Perhaps you are a learning coach or a tech coach in your school. Creating a site as a hub of information, just even within your own building, to share resources, strategies, videos, links, anything you want, this is a really great way to do that. And so this is from Corey Rofi and Hong Tran, and what they have is a way to book with them, as well as some information about their makerspace. So this is where teachers can go to and that one-stop shop in order to do those bookings and work with their tech coach. I want to share with you some of Devin's sites. He was a Google Ninja with us last year, and he's just such a passionate creator with Google. And so he shared with us, this is his Daily Five site. This is where students come to be able to check in and do their Daily Five. He has the Google form for the check-in embedded right here, just so that students can fill that out and keep track of what they're doing. In addition, he has all of the different categories of his Daily Five broken down for students. And this allows students to be able to work at their own pace, be very independent, and allows Devin an opportunity to be able to work with individual students and do his guided reading without having to organize all of these different materials each day with the students. So it's a brilliant teacher time saver and keeps him very organized. Here you can see how he's done his social studies site. This is for his social studies grade 5. I love his custom banner. And of course, he has his outline. This is a fantastic way to be able to communicate with not only your students, but parents who want to know the class expectations. As well, he's embedded his classroom calendars for the different grade levels that he teaches. And then he's broken things down to things like the tools that are going to be available to them. Here you can see this is something called Embed. This is the live website for Google Earth that's living on Devin's site. So I'm going to be showing you how to embed other web pages onto your site. He's made clickable buttons, and he's got some of our other geo tools that we're going to be exploring next week. So it's just a really great way to have that access and make it very visual for students so they can find everything they need to know. And this is an example of a parent communication site that Devin has made. So for here, this is that one-stop place where parents can go to be able to see the overview of the year, to be invited for those parent summaries that are part of the Google Classroom. Remember, parent summaries is just a weekly email reminder. You're not actually inviting parents inside the classroom so that we can keep that privacy of other students safe. He's got his meet the teacher information. And he also has the agenda every day put here in this site. How great is that without having to have kids write it out every day? Classroom outlines and classroom calendars. Parents really don't have to guess any information about what's going on in the class. This is an excellent form of communication. And of course, he didn't stop there. He also has his science site where he's got clickable access for our discovery education. And then he's broken down the other units of study and this way, he can put some information, embedded videos, which we can know go on a, a Google site, and he's used um, some different emphasis. When you see these colors going across a page like that, it's called emphasis in Google Sites. I'm going to show you how he did that. So just a really great example of how easy it is to make these sites. Our other Google Ninja, Jody Nahernak, has also made a site to support GeoTools and social. And so she's got a form for people to fill out, what country are you born in? And it's automatically mapped over here in My Maps. You're going to be excited to learn how to do that next week. And same thing, all of those different tools and links. 
This is an example from Google Ninja Corey Rofi, where he actually created a site dedicated to an entire student project. This is for a lobbyist assignment from grade nine social studies. And so with here, he was able to put together the entire assignment that maybe would traditionally have been done in maybe Google Slides or just as a PDF. But now the information is alive here on the site where he's able to put those curricular outcomes and he's able to build the different sites with images, with videos, with, with um, different types of embed in order to have students have all the information they need at their fingertips. Additionally, students can make sites um, and especially those from our 16 schools. This is an example that I was saying of the Interior Plains project. Instead of kids having to build, say, a paper brochure or a poster, they're able to build a live website that takes to the criteria of their learning and shares their understanding. And again, we can see that in grade 4B. This was for um, looking at Alberta and the different regions of Alberta. Finally, this is a site that I've made that uses GeoTools and 360 images. And so you can see here on a Google site, I can have things like static images, videos, but I can also include 360 degree images that are completely interactive and students can be able to look around and explore. Imagine being able to go deeper into your learning and your textbook or even your stories by being able to take a look around. We're gonna to learn to do this today. All right, so now that we're very excited about the potential of sites, I'm gonna take us through just the beginning of building a bit of a blank one. I'm gonna jump back and forth between my May Google Be With You site as well as a blank one. And you can just see those kind of types and tips and tricks that we can do. And so I invite you to go to sites.google.com slash new and start a new site along with me or edit an old site that you have. All right, so here we see the standard default for when you start a new site. So a couple of things is you can give your sites titles. And of course, each of your individual pages can have titles as well. So the top title is the whole site. The other, this page is just your, your welcome site, your landing page, just for each individual page can have a title. Now, a couple of those what's new and lesser known tips and tricks. I really like to be able to customize my site with themes, with colors. I think having a professional looking site that all matches and flows is really important. So one of the things I really love is we can add a favicon um, and we can also add logos. And so I do like to be able to add that little logo, whether it was made, uh, it's your school logo or it was made in Google Drawings, you can go ahead and you can add that. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe pick our little button that I made for today. Now, when you add a logo, it actually can select theme colors for you from your logo. And so instead of being stuck with that default theme, it actually will look, it'll, it'll analyze your image you've attached, and now it's gonna give you a theme color that matches that. So that's a really neat way to be able to do this. Another way to be able to look at it is to add a favicon. A favicon is a logo that also appears on the URL bar with your site. So much like when I'm going to the MTech Google support site, you can see the MTech logo. When I add a favicon, I'm clicking the ellipsis beside the publish button. And same thing, I'm just going to add that favicon. I'm going to upload it or select it, and I'm going to put it right there. It means that this is going to appear on the navigation bar beside my site when anybody ever visits it. Now, how do I change that custom color without a logo? Whenever I have my theme packages, I'm sort of, it seems like I'm stuck with just those, you know, basic six colors and the basic fonts. Well, just so you know, you can actually hit that little bucket on the far right hand side when you're picking themes. This is what actually allows you to pick a hex code. And so from here, uh, you probably recall from our Google Drawings episode, this is where I like to use my color selector again. So if I was, for example, on the Hour of Code website and I just love that color blue, I can go ahead, use my color picker, get the hex code, copy it, and now when I'm on my Google site, I can actually paste the hex code right there and it's going to take on that as my emphasis. Emphasis is just the side cards. So if I went here and I'm gonna put some text just for something to see, Remembering with our text, we can of course change it to titles, headings, whatever that looks like. And knowing that my font style, I'm given three font styles for each one of my themes. On the left-hand side, 
all the way down these little card stacks, you'll see a little thing called a section background. This is where we can choose specific emphases and we can make that stand out. That's how I make those titles and those divisions on my site. Just know that it can also doesn't have to be a color. Your emphasis can also be an image. And so I can do a Google search or I could use the gallery, but perhaps maybe I had a theme for, you know, space. I can go ahead and look for some space things here, some stars maybe. They're all Creative Commons copyright free. And what's going to happen is it's going to change the emphasis of that little section of that background and it's going to turn it into space. All right, so that's that emphasis that I can put on the page just to make things stand out. Now again, my header, I can also have custom banners. And so I know that I can change that image and I can upload an image. That's in the case of where I want to be able to draw and put my own custom banner. We did that yesterday in Google Classroom. We also did that the day before in Google Drawings. So just so you know, I did include another banner example for you that's 800 by 200 pixels. So if you want to upload your own Google Drawing, you can. But you can also do things like doing a Google image search, or you can also perhaps have, um, you know, a GIF. GIFs are a really fun way to be able to have a banner come alive. So in this case, maybe I did a little Star Wars search for a GIF. I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to copy the image address. And when I go to my site, when I change that image and I want to select that image, I'm going to do it by URL as opposed to uploading an image. And there you go. Welcome to make Google be with you. Han thinks it's cool, we think it's cool, and our site looks amazing. The next thing I want to talk to you about is buttons. Buttons on a page simply just means something that's clickable, that takes me somewhere else. I love making custom buttons because I think that they're just so much more visually appealing. And also I can have things like images to help my users know what they're clicking. So I'm going to show you what the built-in buttons look like. And then I'm going to show you how we can put in our own customized button that we probably built in Google Drawings just a couple of days ago. If you want, I've also included a button here for you below that you can just edit and play around with. So if we take a look at my May Google Be With You landing page, you can see that I have some text and information. I was able to embed our video. I have an image of our calendar of events for the month. And then you can see I have these buttons. And each one of these buttons links to the correct page that I want people to click on. Now you can see here, I need to still link Episode 7 Google Classroom. I say link, I scroll down to the right page and apply. Buttons don't only have to link just to pages within Google Sites. I could also paste a link to something outside of my Google Site, and it will also do that. I like to do that for my Google Classroom. All right, let's say I have episodes seven and eight, but I wanted to see what it would look like um, if I had maybe a, a customized button. So I'm gonna go back to my button. Here's my button I put in my Google Drawings. I can even do fun things like throw my Bitmoji on it, I can say click here. It's whatever I want. I'm simply making my button. What I like is the transparent background of my um, Google Drawing so that I can have this rounded or circular button if I want and not be stuck with a rectangle. File, download as, PNG. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a number so I can just find it quickly. And it's downloaded it. Now what's gonna happen when I'm on my site, I wanna be able to put in a button. So I have a couple of ways to do that. Of course, I can just simply add an image to the page, or you can see here, I've used one of the really awesome layouts. I like the layouts because it basically organizes it and resizes it so I can put my button and it all fits. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my button. I gotta stop right clicking. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select my image from my Google Drive and I'll just go to recent. Now, one of the things you might know when you're choosing the different layouts is it puts it in there and it made it square and it cut off that button. Just know if it's cropping it and you don't like that, click on your image and just choose uncrop. And because I made all of my buttons the exact same size, now my button is in there and it looks good. Another way to do buttons is to actually use the button feature right here built into the insert menu of your Google Sites. So I could call this episode seven and then the link here, again, I can paste an outside link to another website or web page, but I'm going to go here and say insert. 
you can now see the big difference between those buttons. This one is very informative because I was able to put on images, I was able to make it look like I wanted. This is only a text-based button. I can't make it any um, wider, I can simply make it longer. That's it. But they have the exact same function. If I go into my preview mode, I can test it out. And I can see here that this button will equally take me somewhere, this button will equally take me somewhere. It just depends on how you want it to look. One button I really do like to include on my sites, especially if they're for students, is I do like to link to my Google Classroom. Just remember that whenever you're in your Google Classroom, each one of your classrooms actually has a web address. So if I had our maybe Google Be With You classroom from yesterday, and I go ahead and I'm going to copy that link, or of course I can be in the classwork and I can even copy the link directly to a specific assignment. Now inside of my Google site, whichever one I'm editing, I put in my Google Classroom button and I'm just going to link it. Now anybody that clicks there will go to my Google Classroom. Here's the great thing though, even if I have this button on a parent communication site, I shouldn't be posting my Google Classroom code anywhere because I don't want just anybody joining it. And so I can have information for the kids, parents can see that on that site, but only the people who have permission to be in that Google Classroom will actually get there by clicking that button. So it keeps everybody nice and safe. Another really great feature is if Trish was working ahead and she didn't want people to see certain episodes, I can go ahead and work on different episodes and of course at any point I can hide it from the navigation. That way people actually can't even get there or see it if I don't have a button because everything doesn't have to show up in your pull down menu. Also know that with my pull down menu, I have my menu on the sidebar, but you can easily change this from side navigation to top navigation and it will just change how people find all of that information. And that's where if I don't want it to show up in the navigation, I can hide some things. Anytime you make changes, just make sure you hit publish. Don't forget the default of a Google site is actually to publish it and restrict it to ECSD only. You're welcome to change that. Only students can't publish outside of ECSD. Now, one of the other really powerful features of Google Sites is I can embed content right on the page. So instead of students having to have multiple tabs open, looking at multiple things, I could take things from Flippity, Desmos, um, whole web pages, and I can put it right there on the page for students. So I'm going to show you how we embed content onto a site. Now, some of you might remember us exploring Flippity earlier in the week when we were doing Google Sheets. Well, what happens is as soon as you choose one of these templates, you'll get your Google Sheet that you'll be able to fill out that'll have all of that information of the, the thing you're trying to make. Here I was making a, I was making a spreadsheet of a uh, Jeopardy game. So now that I check my link, here is the actual link for my flippity of my game that I have. And you'll notice at the bottom, whenever you see those three dots and lines, it means embed or share. So if I go ahead and I say share, well, a couple of things that I can do is I can just copy that link it's given me. Now on my page, you'll notice under insert, there's the embed button. Or if you double click on your site, you see the same options. I can say embed and I have a choice by embedding by URL or by embed code. I want to insert the whole page, which means it's live. It actually is a live web page right on here. And I, of course, I can resize and make this look how I want. Now my students could participate in a Jeopardy uh, quiz game for studying, and I could put this right on my trees and forest page if that's what I was doing for grade six science. Some other content that's really great to embed is things like Desmos. We know that you can get some really awesome different um, charts. Here I have some trigonometry with the circle. And again, I'm going to see that share graph button and I can see a link, but I can also see embed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that embed code. I'm going to come back over here to my site, click embed, and this time instead of URL, I'm going to say embed code. Next, insert, and now it's live on my page. Keep in mind, most embeddable content isn't interactive when you're in the construction mode of this. You would have to be in your preview mode or you would have to go to the published site to see it. Another thing I like to do is entire web pages. So perhaps we're working on hour of code and I don't want my kids to have to navigate all of the separate steps to be able to get here. Just know I can take web pages, copy the URL, come over here to this web page, choose embed, paste that link, and I can choose, would you like to show up as a static preview button or would you like it to be the live whole web page? I'm going to choose the whole web page. 
and it's going to insert it here on the page and it'll just take a few minutes to load as fast as the internet will go. Finally, I like to embed 360 degree images. This is something that I did as we were doing some fractured fairy tales here in Jasper. How I can do that is I can go to Google Maps and simply do a search for a place. In this particular instance, I chose Peru from our social studies unit. When I go to photos, what I'm looking for is when I scroll down through the photos on the left hand side, I'm looking for photos that have the little swirly arrow that indicate to me that it's spherical. So here I can look around at this beautiful spherical image. And when I find the one that I want, I simply click the ellipsis, the three little dots, and it says share or embed the image. Now, of course, I could either embed the map or I can copy this different link. So each one of those works perfectly fine. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my site and embed it. So I've put in my embed code for Peru. I'm going to see insert. Now, right away, you might be going, whoa, I can't click on it or do anything. Just remember to go into your preview mode. And now I'll be able to look at all of the different content. It'll be live on the page. So if I want to be able to actually use this Desmos graph and move things around, I can do that. If I want to actually play the Jeopardy game. Oh, it's the Daily Double. Woohoo! <laughs> or of course, I can have that 360 image that's live on my page. And so all of this content can be in one visual place for our students. And don't forget, whenever you're on a web page, it's a chameleon style page. So you can see in your preview mode what it will look like on a large screen, a tablet screen, and this is 100% mobile phone friendly for our students. And so even if I was looking at our May Google be with you, as soon as I go into preview, I can see that any of my participants can use any device and still access all this important information at their fingertips and it doesn't matter. All right, I'm on my last two pro tips for you, and this has to do with sharing your site and then copying your site. When we share sites, we know that our web pages end up having really long web addresses. It's hard for people to get to. So I like to use something called Bitly in order to share my websites. You've probably seen bit.ly, may Google be with you when you were signing up. I like to Bitly a lot of different materials, but for sure I do that for my sites. What I do is I just take the publish link, I go to Bitly, you do have to make an account, but instead of being stuck with just an alphanumeric code, I can customize it. Let me show you what it looks like. First of all, make sure that you're actually on the published site. You don't actually want to be in your construction mode because you want to have the right web page. If this is the site that I was trying to send out, look at the address, sites.google.com.edu.ecsd.net slash mtech, g suite. Look at this is too long to give to people. So I'm going to copy that web address and I'm going to go to bit.ly and I've already been signed in. I'm going to create and you paste your long link. Now what happens is it gives me um, a, a basically an alphanumeric code I can share, but even that's hard to remember. So maybe I'm just going to call this Rofi. Google, so people remember how to find this. I'm going to say save. If the bitlink hasn't been taken, because only one address can exist in the world for this, this particular one worked. It'll just say that custom bitlink has been taken, try again. So now I can copy this, bit.ly slash Rofi Google will actually get you to the May Google Be With You site. And so I can hand that out on a newsletter, I can post that in my classroom, I can send that to parents, and it takes you to that site really quick and easy. Finally, I want to talk to you about copying sites. We know that we're really collaborative in Edmonton Catholic Schools. We love to share. Look at us sharing this whole experience with our colleagues from other school districts and around the world. But I do know that we want to be able to share in a way that also we can retain ownership of some things, or maybe we're leaving a school or we're moving around. So if you built an amazing department site or subject area site and you just want to share it with a colleague, or perhaps you are leaving, you're moving to another school and you don't want to take that tech coach site away from that school. Just know that you can actually, first of all, copy an entire site. So that's a great way to share it with a colleague. Um, and as well, you can transfer ownership of sites so that, you know, someone else can now own it and you have your copy and you take it away. So let me show you with my Goldilocks, my Blue Lock site with my 360 images. Let's say I had a teacher that really loved the information on the site. They wanted a copy of it and I want to be able to give them that copy and transfer ownership. So what I'm going to do is when you're inside your site, first thing you're going to see under the ellipsis, the three dots, is you're going to see something that says duplicate site. When you duplicate the site, you're going to be able to give it a name. I'm just going to call this copy may Google be with you so I know to get rid of it later. 
It'll ask you where you want to put it. Do you want to share it with the same editors? Doesn't matter. I'm going to duplicate this site. It's going to copy the whole thing and depending on the size of your site, it may take a few minutes. All right, where did it go? What? Where's my sites? Yep, you're going to have to go back to your sites.google.com slash new just to be able to see where it put it. You're still in the original site. So now that I'm on my main menu, I can see the copy of the site. I can go into that copied site. And this is now where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my collaborator. In this particular case, I can see that I own it along with my multiple personalities, but I'm going to enter the name of the person that I want to give this site to. In this case, I'm going to give it to the amazing Danny Moss. Your new site. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say sent. Now, the extra little step to be able to transfer the ownership is to be able to say, actually, Danny's now the owner. And you could even remove yourself from it and now save the changes. Now that site belongs to them, they're editing it, it's completely theirs, and you still retain your original one. It's gonna let you know, I don't have anything to do with this anymore, yep. And now it's done. So that's Google Sites. It makes me very excited to share information because we can make self-paced learning experiences with interactive content for teachers, for students, and parents. So give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. Now I want to end our session today by giving away some prizes. Yesterday in our Google Classroom Challenge, I said that I'd like you to share any kind of lessons that you have, and I was going to do a draw. Well, you know what? I can't pick. I have four amazing people that submitted some lessons yesterday. I just want to show you what a couple of them look like, and then I'm going to give them all a prize. So yesterday, may Google be with you, I posted the lesson, sharing is caring. And I can go ahead and I can see that four people have turned in some things. Amanda Ramek, she showed us a really great activity. This is a good example of how she was able to just submit a picture of her learning. I didn't say it had to be a digital lesson. So this is a great um, bulletin board that she's created for kids being able to organize their thinking. If I keep clicking through, I can see that the amazing Devin Austin has given us one, two, three, four awesome templates, roles in provincial government, a PAT practice questions, an immigration exit ticket, and even a famous five Instagram template. Don't worry, I'm going to be sharing all of these resources on our May Google Be With You pages so that you can share the love of what they've given us as well. I also have Jody Nahernik. She's given us a social studies passport template. This is really fantastic. Joanna Martin hasn't attached anything, but Joseph Philippic, he has given us a chapter three explore trading card and it's just gonna take a couple minutes to load here. So thank you for sharing and making this interactive. What you have all won is I'm getting you your very own copy of Bring the World to Your Classroom. This is a fantastic book that's all about Google Geo Tools, and that's next week. We're going to be looking at Google Earth, Google My Maps, Google Tour Creators, some virtual reality. You're going to see it all happen. And so you're going to get this book, a copy of you. Thank you for sharing, and I'll have more chances for people to win prizes next week. So thanks for tuning in. As always, if you have things to share, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, please Please let me know and we're going to keep the Google fun going all month long. Bye everybody!